Hi, and welcome to the flight video for flight six of the Hawkins Super Lancer. Yeah. We're here at the Henry Ford Museum in Detroit on our way home from my sister's wedding. Flight 6 was the first time we deployed the flaps on the Super Lancer. Absolutely a, a, a milestone moment on the program. And I'm excited to share it with you now. Hawkin Lancer. <laughs> Flight 6. New custom flap design. So many tucks, tweaks and fixes, first flap flight test, first flap stall. Stall speed is going up. Yes sir. So many questions. So before we get started, a real quick thank you to our sponsors. Uh, Butler Parachute makes a fantastic parachute. I wouldn't be able to have the confidence that I need to do the work that I do in the cockpit uh, without having my butler with me. Also, I need to thank uh, our Patreon supporters. It's uh, consistently impressive to me that not only are there people out there that are willing to share uh, their resources in these trying times uh, to support a little operation, but that that number continues to grow. Thank you for the... Uh, for the uh, for the thought, it means a lot, and uh, I, I uh, try to think about that every time we uh, apply that effort uh, to these videos. So thanks for coming along. So a quick review of the program, but all this information is contained in the preceding five flights, all of which are uploaded on YouTube. One, two, three, four, Here's a quick, quick description uh, that Hawkins shot at his house. A uh, big thank you to Hawkins for taking the time to shoot this introduction. My objectives with this project was to uh, maintain a cruise speed of about 190 knots, but I wanted to lower the stall speed. My goal is about 55 knots. So in order to reach that goal, I decided to uh, design and build uh, double slotted file flaps and hopefully that will bring down the stall speed and also make it a little bit more docile in the lower speed region. Here you can see the CAD model parts from that previous clip uh, now turning into three-dimensional parts with relatively flat parts being turned into the actual flap using the old uh, hot wiring blue foam method. Always nice to see this method applied in new, new ways uh, and certainly results in a, a great way to build structure quickly. Uh, most relevant to this particular flight, uh, here you can see photos of, of the load test that Hawken did in his garage before he moved the airplane to the hangar. This is an unusual step, but greatly reduced the risk of the, this per particular pro part of the program where we're loading the flaps in the air for the first time. He used a, a home-built whiffle tree that he assembled out of, uh, out of wood from uh, Home Depot and allowed him to put the designed load case on the flaps uh, as installed on the airplane before ever having to get, get airborne. So this gets rid of a lot of the risk uh, of this flight. Other mods that I did was a wing tip extension kit, wing fillet modification, and uh, also the outback main landing gear, and also a larger horizontal tail and elevator. I also did some modifications to the dorsal fin, making a sharper leading edge. I also put in the longer uh, engine mount to bring the uh, engine further forward and extend the decal, move the, uh, the power, hydraulic power pack forward and the battery as well. So all of that brings us up to where we are. It took about four years to get here. So yeah, we are where we are and the flight tests are continuing and uh, I'll just um, hope for the best. So I inspected the flaps uh, when I did the initial inspection when I first met Hawkin and saw the airplane for this first time. But we've been so busy with you know basic getting the airplane flying stuff, mostly related to cooling. Hadn't really thought about the flaps for a while. We 
spent some time before flight six to move the flaps around and look at the all the load cases again uh, i got really concerned about the the fact that yeah we we took the flaps out and we loaded them as they're designed to be loaded but but uh because of there was three structural elements that all did a great job of reacting the loads in plane in in the direction they were expected to be loaded it sort of could function as a parallelogram allowing the flap to sort of move back and forth so span wise down the wing and i wanted to make sure i put some load on it and see what happened You can see that once we put that side load on the flaps, they actually, not only did they move, uh, but they actually impeded the movement of the aileron, uh, which is a pretty significant concern being a primary flight control. Uh, Hawken being a, a good old fashioned home builder just got out the grinder and trimmed that aileron down until it was no longer a factor, which allowed us to keep moving. So when we talk about the risks of the program, I sort of simplified it down into three major components. The first being a major structural failure, right? So whether that's a asymmetric deployment or retraction or after the flaps are deployed, once you get to speed, the flaps fail sort of in plane. Um, that sort of a high energy failure that would result quickly in the aircraft becoming uncontrollable was the first and, and biggest risk as I saw it. The second biggest risk was horizontal tail stall. So horizontal tail stall is, is really scary because it results in a, in a handling qualities cliff where you know, you're getting slower and getting slower and everything's sort of doing, uh, flying as you expect. You have pitch authority, you can lower the nose as expected, but then the whole stab lets go as one and the airplane pitch bunts over the top and typically you end up in, in the cases I've seen, uh, inverted uh, and in an in a, a inverted spin. An inverted spin uh, is not a big deal assuming you're high enough uh, of course, that's assuming that the airplane can, is structurally set up for it. You know, if the, if the engine falls off, if the seat belts fail, if uh, you know, a bunch of debris floating around the cockpit, that can be really dangerous. Or if the airplane is incapable of recovering from an inverted spin. Uh, it seems likely that the Lance Air would recover from an inverted spin, but it's not something that people typically do. So there's a lot of risk there. The third risk factor is what I would call uh, inadequate but still symmetric handling quality problems. Most of that being in the pitch axis. So obviously as you're going slower and slower and slower, you may not uh, result in a handling qualities cliff, but you may end up in a situation where the airplane is sort of uh, become degraded in terms of handling qualities to such a point that it's really not safe to land, but you're not thinking about it uh, uh, properly. So uh, I worked on a program once where I was flying an airplane, I was dive testing an airplane, and the ailerons became jammed during the dive test. I was up at uh, seven or 8,000 feet because I was dive testing the airplane, and at seven or 8,000 feet, uh, it, it was, uh, it handled well enough. So I proceeded back to the airport uh, with the control jam, uh, fighting it, uh, as I flew back. The problem was that once I descended down to pattern elevation, the turbulence was such that the, the amount of limited lateral control that I had because of the jam was now suddenly a really big issue. At seven or 8,000 feet, I wasn't getting bopped around, so I didn't have to use the ailerons very much, so it didn't take as much aileron control to be safe. Once I descended down below bailout altitude, down to the uh, traffic pattern where things are a lot busier and it's a lot harder to sort of uh, back yourself up, the airplane's getting knocked around. I'm thinking, man, I, I should have thought about this more, or I wonder if uh, if I would have progressed towards a landing if I if I had been able to predict this. The, the scary idea being that uh, you get so low that you can't bail out, uh, but you also can't land. 
So in the case of this, it could be that the uh, uh, that while yes, you can control the airplane uh, statically, you know, you, you can take the airplane to a predicted stall speed and then to a predicted landing speed. You may not have enough, uh, just like we talked about, roll control to deal with the turbulence in the uh, in the area, or there's something going on with the uh, the uh, Dutch roll mode that's driven by tail blinking, uh, where the airplane is is slowly becoming uncontrollable, but you're having trouble perceive it, or really the most likely scenario, which is where the control forces have reversed. You know, you're you're well past the stick free uh, neutral point and into the stick fixed neutral point or maybe past the stick fixed neutral point and the workload has gotten up very high again where it's it's uh, not an issue with the, uh, the the low demands of high altitude flight but once you get down and you're you know trying to get to the runway and you're trying to maneuver around traffic etc it becomes really dangerous <clears throat> This being the first time the flaps were going to be extended in flight, uh, talking to taking some time to make a little uh, flap indicator, which I thought was kind of nifty. So basically it was just a, a series of lines on the flap and wing that uh, as the flap was extended would line up uh, to give you the flap uh, position for a given uh, extension. Um, you can see that here. Uh, maintenance performed brief for flight six of Hawkins airplane, uh, day is 10-23-2020. Uh, prop cable, so you said the prop cable broke? Prop cable broke at the, at the, by the governor, so I had to uh, get a whole new one all the way in. And you said that was a real bugger to replace? Uh, yes, it's bugger and a half. <laughs> <laughs> Two buggers, got it. Uh, and then uh, increased tab down deflection. Yep. Walk me through that. So this is the elevator screw right. tab here. Right. So I removed the access panel here, pulled the rod out, and then adjusted the rod as much as I could to get maximum down. Right. And then uh, pulled it up to center and marked up the center on the indicator. Okay. Yeah. So there's a new mark in the cockpit for? For neutral. For center. Yep. And that's neutral fared with the surface. All right, and so zero is fared with the surface cat. And you prop adjusted the prop governor to 2700? Yes, so I pulled it out, I think it was four turns. Okay. Which should give 100 RPM. And when I did a static run, it was 2800, but I expect it to go down to 27 when it gets grabbing the air and whatnot, so I think we should be good on that. Okay, uh, and then the new rubber inlets uh, for the cooling. Where do you, what material is that? Where do you get that? It's a new cream. But you buy it like, it's not just a chunk of a wetsuit, it's a... No, it, it's, it's like master stuff. Oh, okay. And then I staple on some Velcros. Oh. And then I have two uh, big hose clamps to hold it in place. So it's a double double attachment. Cool. And then uh, transponder antenna, that was the problem oh, with yeah. the transponder? Oh, yeah. loose. <laughs> oh, weird. <laughs> cool. Where is that? It's on the belly? Oh, it's no, it was up here by the transponder, going into the transponder. So it was under the, uh, the glitter shield. Okay. So I took all that stuff off, uh, put it back in, and uh, zipped it in place so it shouldn't be able to move. Cool. And then uh, external heat barrier on the belly? Yes, I added a little bit more patch after the one that I have there. Oh yeah, okay. Because I noticed it was a little bit burned paint there. So, so That's this... That's the first one, that was the original. That's the original, and then yeah. this area was, uh, the paint was getting unhappy? Yeah. So you added this section here. Okay, and then uh, ignition, the, the uh, ignition CHT moved from cylinder three to cylinder two? Yes. So to the hottest cylinder? Right, so the laser uh, ignition system wants the, uh, the, the probe on the hottest cylinder, so it just the, the ignition accordingly when you get up the altitude and all the parameters, manifold pressure and whatnot, uh, it's synced to that. So we'll see if that makes any difference. Okay, Yeah. and then lastly, it's full gas. Full gas. Cool. And also the, uh, the flap indicator system. Flap indicator system, and then we did the aileron mods. Yes. Up a little bit there. Just to be on the same side. We talked about the uh, flap indication. Yep. 
So I replaced the gasket with cylinder one intake, right. the intake tube. Right. So it was kind of wet, not okay. on the outside, but on the inside. Okay. So what I did, I took the tube off and the receptacle off and checked the receptacle and the receptacle was a little bowed. So I sanded that down to become flat and then put the tube in and leveled them, you know, right. gently. And then they cleaned up the interfaces, put the new gasket in, put everything in, and uh, hopefully we will see some different EGTs on, on number one. Right. Okay. No leak, hopefully. Cool. So we'll do a radio check uh, right here, uh, but after the engine started, before we start taxiing, then I'm gonna go over to ground, uh, come out here, make the call to ground, go down, do the run up, just like we have been. Uh, we had uh, had to do some mag stuff, was it the, the first sortie of the last remember, last trip? But we might have to do it again, we'll see. Right, so watch for mag stuff, uh, switch over to tower, take off, uh, so you're gonna follow along on the frequencies, and once, assuming there's no debris on the runway or any of the other <laughs> weird issues that we've had, uh, once I get out of the delta, I'm gonna go to button one, Yep. Off to the north. I'm going to climb to 10,000 feet for bailout considerations at 120 knots. Um, so once reaching 10,000 feet, it's going to slow down to 90 knots. Extend uh, 10 degrees of flap using the indication on the wing. Uh, accelerate out to 100 knots, uh, looking for changes in uh, trim as we do that. So first the trim changes when the flaps go out, and then any more changes as you go fast, assuming that if a uh, flap is deforming or whatever. If the uh, lateral trim gets out to where I'm more than uh, halfway, so stick centered, stop, if I'm more than halfway to the stop, we're gonna board and I'm gonna come home at any point. And that's uh, with the uh, our newly installed yaw string center. So we'll center, center this, and if I'm still uh, more half than or more than half than aileron travel, we come home. Uh, so after accelerating out to 100 knots, we're gonna decel down to a stall. Try to keep note of where is the elevator position relative to the stop, and then, uh, uh, again, how much aileron power is remaining and then how much trim is remaining, all, all that stuff. Um, I think the biggest thing is um, we're not going to do any hint, like we're not going to need to hit a roll rate right now. No. But if I'm, if I, as of the, we're slowing down, I'm running out of aileron, then once we get to 50%, same rule all day, 50% all day, we're going to come home, we're going to talk about it with the uh, yaw string center. Okay. Uh, so then I'm going to accelerate back to 90 knots. I'm going to go to 15 degrees of flaps, accelerate to 100 knots, just like we did before, then decelerate down to a stall again, then accelerate to 90 knots, extend to 20 degrees, do a handling check there, accelerate to 100 knots, handling check there, decel to a stall, handling check there, then I'm going to pull the flaps up and RTB. Uh, expecting a normal flaps up landing it with 110 knot approach, matching what we've done previously. Uh, transponder's going to be on all day, uh, frequencies, Ground, they're all on your card there. Ground 121.65, tower 119.875, ATIS 132.025, button 1, 12345, button 2, 127.475. We're full of gas. I'm gonna go out on the left tank and come home on the right tank. So we'll use that sort of same pattern we've been doing. Mission limits, uh, I have 420 in the climb. Is that right? We can go higher. We, we went to 440, 440. Right? 440, okay. Yeah. So that's an error on my card. So I'm changing that to 440 in the climb. Yeah. And then oil temp 215, that's still good? Yeah. Okay. Uh, expected BSO 57 knots, uh, VS mm -hmm. 77 knots. I should be saying um, indicated, but the indicated at the VS was what, 68? 68. Something like that. So we're off by 10 knots there. Um, well, we, we don't know that for sure, though. VFE, you're, we're holding with 100, and, 100 knots indicated. Yes, let's do that. Uh, landing gear extension speed, 122 knots indicated. Uh, VA, 157. VNE, 259. Limit load factor, 3.8. Uh, gear up and then gear down, 2.0. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other limits that we didn't cover? I think we talked about the 50% in on throw. Flaps down 2.0, not gear up, right? You said gear up. I said gear, sorry. Yeah. So flaps down 2.0. Yeah. yeah. Okay. 
Uh, bailout altitudes, so field elevation here. What is field elevation? 1400. So we'll use uh, 4000. Out of control below 4000. We're going for the door. That gives me 3000 feet. Let's make it five. So out of control below five. 5000 bailout. Um, so bailout criteria. If I can't. So we assume touchdown is at what? A fast touchdown would be maybe 100 knots. So if I can't control the airplane at 100 knots, so if the flaps bend or break or something, and I can't get comfortable controlling the airplane with like a 2G turn at 100 knots, then we're gonna go for the door. If I get within, um, if I have to have the control within 10% of the stop, I'm gonna go for the door at 100 knots. Within 10%, do you think that's fair? I don't mean to be directive here. I'm just trying to have a conversation before yes, we take yes. off. Yes, I'm trying to think about it. It seems fair. 10% of stop, 2G turn at 100 knots. Uh, and the bailout procedure is going to be, uh, I'm going to find an area that's abandoned, but as close to the airport as I can on the north side. I'm going to do my best to tell you where I am, and then I'm yeah. going to go for the door. Uh, you're going to use FlightAware to know where I am. Hopefully I can see you. I haven't tried it yet, so we'll see. And then I'm going to have the cell phone, so that'll be the final way that we can rendezvous yeah. if I'm on foot. So I'm going to say that again. Out of control below 5,000 feet, I'm going for the door. If I'm within 10% of a, of a control stop, is, does that include the pitch axis? At a 2G, in a 2G turn at 100 knots, I'm going for the door. Does that include the pitch axis? I think so. 2G turn at 100 knots. So what I'm concerned about is like if, if you only have, if you can only put enough CL on the wing to get to 100 knots, but I can't turn, mm. that doesn't work, right? So maybe 2G is too much, but I need to be able to maneuver at some, and I'm not gonna approach the airport at 100 knots, right? You're gonna approach it at 120 or something. Right. A normal approach is 110. Right. So approach the airport at say 120, and then you need to be able to decel and have control. You can land at 120. Land at 120, okay, so what do you want? 2G at 120? 1.5G at 120? Bailing out sucks. I, I know, I'm, I'm trying to get it simple here. Yeah. So, 2G at 100 is a better scenario than 2G at 120. It's, it's definitely better, but the question is, is it better than bailing out? So would I rather touch down at 150 knots and go screaming off the end, uh, than, or bail out? So I think it's probably Obviously one. saving the plane at running at 150. If that can be done. It's... So let's say 150 at 1.5. Yeah. And you know, assuming that we have radio comms and everything, we're, this isn't going to happen fast. We would have time to talk about it. Right. But I just want to make sure that we've thought about what are the scenarios that are going to add up to yeah. uh, going for the door. Besides just you know a dynamic, we're out of control. It's an mm -hmm. inverted spin. I can't get out of it. You know. I can't get the thing to stop spinning, therefore I'm going to bail out. Yeah. So we're on the same page. I don't want to bail out of your airplane. Of course not. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I also don't I want to. I don't want to have an argument about uh, whether or not it's worth to try to uh, attempt a approach right. any more than we have to. Uh, okay. So are there any other uh, emergency procedure stuff? That, so there's flaps up. Is there a Circuit breaker for the flaps? Yes. So if the circuit breaker pops, I'm obviously going to push it back in. Yeah. Probably would do that a whole bunch of times just because I don't really care about burning up the motor. Right. Uh, just exactly. try to get them as far up as I can, yep. or whatever as safe as I can. If I start to pull them up and they come up asymmetrically, then I put them back down. Yes. Um, and all that's going to come back to where's the stick. So if they're coming up and the stick is moving over, then we're going to put them back down until the stick is centered and we're coming and shooting approach, whatever we get. Okay. okay. 
any uh, go no go items. If I can't hear you on the radio, do you want me to go? I got. I don't have another radio. I almost brought one. This one should work. Okay. Yeah. No, I think continue. Um, so if I if there's no radio, then um, you're going to use Flight Aware to look for the wreckage. If I'm not back in an hour, because there's no way this is going to take an hour. Yeah. Okay. Uh, any alternate missions? Uh, you had said oh, alternate static. Yeah. This does a you know, interesting check. Okay. Any other alternate missions? If you feel comfortable going for more flat, it's up to you. Okay. Cool. All right. All right. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be awesome. <laughs> That's the rumor. Got like a metric. <laughs> Metric crap ton of uh, cameras to turn on. <laughs>I think you can hear the work that Hawken did uh, on the induction system uh, right here after engine start, but certainly here in the next shot uh, as the airplane taxis by, I think it's pretty apparent. A few moments later. So I'm not sure if you caught that, but uh, I could actually grab the propeller lever and pull it all the way back to the feathered position and release it, and it would snap back to the uh, to the forward position. I had never experienced this before, uh, and was certainly uh, raising some questions. Back feels good. So just so we're clear, that's the pilot whining about how his back hurts, but we'll get to that later. So if you remember, uh, during the maintenance perform brief, uh, Hawken had said that he had replaced the cable, the, the propeller cable, from the lever down to the propeller governor. So initially, that's what we thought it was. Uh, he laid on the belly, and I, uh, I moved the handle back and forth, and he looked at where the cable was failing. What it ended up actually being was the propeller governor. Uh, so he had talked about the, that he had changed the cable, but he didn't talk about in the maintenance perform brief uh, that there had been a leak in the propeller governor and that he had removed a screw and, and put some um, like some gasket sealer type material on the screw and then put the screw back in because 
the screw itself was leaking. Uh, in the process of doing that, we think he spilled some of that gasket sealing material on the shaft. So if you've, uh, I'm, I know I'm talking to, to people that have done this before, but just in case you haven't, if you're looking at the back of a propeller governor, there's a lever coming off the back of it, right? And the propeller lever in the cockpit moves the lever back and forth, okay. That lever actually translates that uh, motion sort of in the axis of the uh, crankshaft into a fore and aft motion of the, the body of the, the lever itself, uh, which actually moves the springs and changes the counterweight. Anyway, that that shaft where it goes in and out of the governor had actually gotten the sealant on it. So as a result, uh, when once I moved the lever, it jammed and you could no longer move the lever anymore. Luckily, once we got back to the hangar, you could just, once you moved it around, it got free again. So we did an engine run uh, and confirmed everything was functioning as, as it expected. But now there's a real common thing that happens, right? Where, um, you know, I had driven whatever it was, three, four hours to get down there. We had, we'd done a false start where we get everything set up to fly, taxi out, and then come back. I have to reset everything. You know, it's, uh, what is it? Uh, six GoPros uh, that have to have batteries changed and cards changed. Got to get all that stuff sorted. Um, it's real easy to feel the, the rush of trying to get another flight off and not, not take a step back and just make sure that we really understand what's going on with the propeller governor. So I actually, uh, once we were all ready to fly again, I got uh, Dennis Sanders on the phone. Uh, Dennis, I work for up in, uh, up in Sacramento. I called Dennis and um, I just walked him through kind of what we had experienced. Like, hey, have you ever seen anything like this? The idea being that like we didn't want a situation where we thought it was one thing, but in fact, not only was it another thing, but the airplane had just given us our last warning, right? Uh, anyway, after that conversation, I was confident and we moved on. Probably the best part about this little setback is it forced me to come to grips with the fact, I already mentioned it, that my back was just killing me after that first taxi. Uh, so there's a seat back, a seat pan, right? There's a, a bulkhead that's built into the airplane, but there's a removable seat pan that gives you access for the control runs, etc. cetera. And um, we, because my back hurt so much, this was the first time I had tried to fly with a parachute, we just tried uh, while we were fixing the propeller governor to take that seat back out and just see if we could make the parachute work. And it was so much better. Uh, if I had known we could do that, I would have done it on every flight. Uh, so it goes, uh, but, uh, but it allowed me to fly comfortably uh, with the parachute on this high-risk flight, which was absolutely critical to making the whole thing work. Ramona Tower, Experimental 320, Hotel Lima, holding short, runway 27, ready to roll. Experimental 320, Hotel Lima, Ramona Tower, North Departures approved, runway 27, clear for takeoff. 27, clear for takeoff, 320, Hotel Lima. Again, doesn't that thing sound healthy? Uh, you can go back and watch the, the previous videos, but uh, the, the difference is striking. Uh, you'll see in a second, Hawking calls up on the radio and says that he thought it sounded better and looked better as well. Experimental Zero Hotel Lima, mode C appears in operative recycle. 320 Hotel Lima. Terminal Zero Hotel Lima, I'm still not getting an altitude readout on your target. Uh, Hotel Lima, let, let me try uh, flashing. Terminal Zero Hotel Lima, I can see your ident and I've shown a speed of 140 knots. But no altitude readout. Hotel Lima, thanks. Fairmont is there. Hotel Lima, right. frequency change is approved. See ya. Hotel Lima, thanks for the help. And hey, Glitter One checking in. Okay, can hear you. How's it going? I hear you as well. Temps are good. Uh, yeah, peak CHT was uh, 409, roughly a minute after takeoff. We're down to 381 now. Great. Did you get any good RPM on takeoff? 2800 on takeoff. Oh my goodness. Woohoo! Okay, 36,000 for 10,000. Roger. We briefed this before, but uh, there's a lot of value to uh, when you're doing stalls, having a single shot with the horizon and elevator position and the airspeed all, all together in one. It's hard with the way the canopy works on the Lancer. Uh, so what I've been doing is to put the camera in the back and then uh, once you get airborne and you know you're not gonna have to get out of the airplane in a hurry, move the camera up to the front and then you have that shot that you need for the stalls. Thank you. 
So we've seen this before, but uh, before we get into the high risk portion of the flight, uh, I always like to do one last dress rehearsal. Typically a high risk portion of the flight's flown at altitude, so you've got this long, boring, like, like low anxiety moment as you're climbing up. And as a way to sort of get your head in the game of what's coming, I try to just drill the emergency egress one last time, right? So, so what are all my steps? What are all the things that I need to be thinking about? Uh, in this case, the airplane has four, one, two, three, four latches that uh, release the canopy. So there's, there's two primary latches and then two uh, safety latches. So that was my biggest concern. We had talked about the tail stall situation where you're inverted in a spin and the airplane's unrecoverable and now you're trying to find the latches inverted in the cockpit, which uh, uh, again, the audience has probably dealt with that before, but it's uh, certainly an easy way to make mistakes. So this was a chance to check that one last time uh, before starting the high rest portion of the flight. Okay, with you 10,000, I'm slowing down. Roger that. Pull the throttle back, I'm getting some backfiring. Roger. Okay, there's 100 knots. Roger. There's 90 knots. My uh, right hand on the flight control, give me a ready to go. Alrighty, let's try it out. Alright, here it comes. Lever's in the down position, flaps are moving. No roll trim change. I'm at 10 degrees. There's a pitch trim change for sure. Okay. Uh, try to trim it out. The stick didn't move much. Okay, here we are, stable at 90. I'm gonna lean over for 100 knots. Coming up on 10,000 feet. All right, there's 100. We'll do a little handling check here. Plenty of roll power. Roger. As consistent with previous tests, the uh, roll to the right is as powerful as roll to the left. Okay. But we have plenty of roll power, 9,800 feet. All right, I'm going to set the floor down. There's 95. I was able to trim out most of the pitch force, so it's pretty neutral pitch force right now. All right. 85. Doing some roll checks here at 85. Through 9,500 feet. Uh, there's 80 knots, 80 knots. Okay, we check at 80 knots. Roll power's getting pretty light, as in there's not much available. 80 knots, gonna continue. Nose is coming up, there's 75. Forces are very light. Okay, that feels like Buffett there, 75.
Charlie Waller and around here trying to drop a wing. I'm going to go ahead and uh, sorry back out to 90 knots. Flaps are coming up. up. So what flap was this? 10 or 15? That was 10. Power's coming back up. I'm going to climb. Took the power as expected. Looks good. Roger. So just a review on the uh, flaps upstall, I thought we were down below 70 knots, is that accurate? They were below 70 knots without flaps before. Interesting, so it seems uh, unlikely that the flap speed would have gone up, or the stall speed would have gone up. Yeah, there might be some interesting separation going in the early stages of the flap. I want to accelerate uh, back to best climb, and we'll uh, do a clean stall real quick just to make sure that baseline is right. Roger. Hey, uh, low power was not awesome. Uh, stick forces were pretty light. Okay. But again, I expected to go another 20 knots, and we didn't. So uh, I was, I guess there was more roll power than I expected for how close to stall speed we were. 9,500. I'm going to work my way over to the west side of the box here before I turn back, and then we'll do a clean stall, put the flaps back at 10, do that stall, and then go to 15. Roger. Okay, big right turn coming. I'm going to start slowing down. Start with that clean stall. Can you still have my position via ADSP? Yeah, I don't think it's accurate and updated, but I'm trying to get it uh, updated here. Alright, I'm just north of the field, uh, about a couple miles. Roger. There's 90. So that's a stall at 75. Here comes back to 10 degrees of flaps. Okay. 10 degrees of flaps set. Maybe 72. Okay, 15 degrees of flap set. Roger. Out to 100 knots. No link qualities check. No link qualities at 100 knots just fine. Nose is coming up. Takes a lot of left rudder here. Keep, to keep that uh, yaw string centered. 80. 75.
still 72. Out to 100. There's 100 knots. Coming up on 9,000 feet. Handling quality's check at 100 knots. Roger. And the stick is just about centered for all this so far. Uh, nowhere near the f-stop. Cool. What was the stall at 15? Did you try that? Yeah, it was still right around uh, 72. Not seeing any change in stall speed so far. Roger. 80, 75, and 72. Probably again for the stall speed recovered. Here comes the uh, 25. Roger. 25 degrees flat to set. Out to uh, 100 knots of VFE. Through 9,000 feet. No change in roll forces. Okay, working on the diesel 75 and uh, yeah, Buffett's right there just below 75 again. Okay. Traffic coming up, we'll reset. Power's up, working on a climb. Alright, so just a review of where we've been. Uh, we did from 10 to 25 degrees flaps, 5 uh, degree increments out to VFE and then down to min speeds. I've seen no change in stall speed so far. Uh, stick does not appear to be moving closer to the aft stop uh, with more flap deployment. Roll power is definitely uh, low at those uh, low speeds, but not a concern so far. There is no roll trim change. No uh, flap deployment so far. Okay. So I think lots of good news, except for the stall speed not changing. Right, we should have toughed at the whole wing and see if it's the wing is stalling and not the flaps. Yeah, it, it, uh, it's a different feeling stall, so there's not a lot of warning, and what I'm feeling is uh, uh, Buffett in the elevator uh, and uh, a loss of uh, uh, pitch force in the, in the elevator, but uh, the nose isn't dropping. I mean, certainly I could just wail on it and take it to the stop, but it feels like it's done. the nose is done coming up at that point. All right. So let's go ahead and do another one out at 25, and this time I'm going to hit the aft stop. Okay. My concern is that the... Uh, airplane has a tendency to tip stall. Okay. I think at uh, 25 degrees of flaps, we should be seeing some change in stall speed. Do you agree? Absolutely. Okay. Did you try the uh, the alternate uh, static? You can do that right now, sure.
No change. Okay. Uh, are you comfortable going beyond 25 degrees flaps? Absolutely. Okay. We're just going to repeat the 25 degree flap point first, and we'll go from there. Roger. If I if I was seeing any trim change or any elevator stick displacement with flap position, I would be more hesitant to go further. But so far, I see no indication of anything's happening besides looking out the window and seeing the flaps move. Well, that is strange. Strange, but good. Obviously, the structural loads are still there, and we haven't inspected the hinges, etc. And we're just going to repeat that 25 degree flap stall, but I'm going to take it all the way to the uh, elevator pitch stop and see if that changes anything. So you don't want to go to 30? I'm just going to repeat the 25 degree point first. Gotcha. Okay, flaps coming out. Definite uh, pitch trim change, but the stick doesn't have to move far to fix it. Just north of the field, uh, uh, eastbound. 11,000. Roger. 70 knots there. Okay. But I'd say I got half the stick left. Great. Okay, 30 degrees flap set. Yeah. Out to the FE. Gotcha. Still no lateral trim change. And I've trimmed to the up stop on the elevator trim. Still, still taking some force to hold the nose up. Yeah, that's like 75 stall speed. At 30 flap? 30 flap. That's weird.
So there's very little force in the elevator, but there's plenty of elevator left, right? I'm not even, it feels like I'm at, like, neutral stick. Cool. The fact that there's no force uh, concerns me from a stab stall perspective. Yeah, into that. So I think uh, my gut is we knock it off here and take a look at the tape, see what the stab uh, tufts are doing. Okay. We're comfortable repeating the 35 degree flat point if you just want to make sure we got it from a video perspective. Roger. Yeah, 75 uh, with 35 degrees of flaps. Roger. Flaps are coming up. And again, just no force in the pickaxe. Okay. From 0 to 35, okay, no Okay, I'm Mark Neal, if you got anything else on me. Interesting. Repeat that again, please. Uh, I'm going to RTB unless you got anything else for me. You want to go to 40? I think uh, we need to knock it off and look at the tape from a uh, stall, stab stall standpoint. Got you. All right, RTB. Woo! All righty. Congratulations, sir. Man, good stuff and bad stuff. Congratulations, sir. Man, good stuff and bad stuff, but hey. It's mostly good, I think. I don't understand. Any indication problems? The airflow, the inflow changes to the you know, in such a way that it doesn't. Or you got a problem with your static port. Alright, that's pretty easy. Did you get the GPS speeds in there? Uh, they'll be on the tape. Ah, we need to check that. Because right now we have the stall speed the same as flap up and 35 down, or 30, whatever it was. 30. It was. Uh, but the, the, you notice that it went do, uh, the nose down. It was and, definitely a trim change, yeah. Yeah. But it didn't take much elevator position to change it. That's that's good. News. That's all good. Yeah. That's all good. That's super. The roll good. power now the airspeed indicator airspeed never came down, but roll power wasn't a problem. Like he was handling. The what like I was worried. You know we talked about it, all this yeah, lateral yeah, trim yeah. stuff. Yeah. Like none of that stuff was an issue. And um, the flaps went out. Smoothly. They must have been like it was disconcerting. Like um, one time I deployed twenty. It was like you know beep 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 beep, yeah. beep, beep twenty. Like fly fly fly. Yeah. Look out and it's a twenty five. Okay, so pulled back up to 20, did my stuff, like, then we went to the next one to 25, and then when I did 30, I set it to 30, and just as I was starting to look away, I saw it start to go, like, it stopped, and then I started to look away, and it kept going, whoa, 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 stopped it, pulled it back up to 30. I know what that is. It's, obviously, there's a mechanical... Uh, but, like, wind up. Wind up, right? Yeah. So, whatever air force pitching moment that the flap has, it's either pulling it out or pushing it in, depending on the location. And I know this since we did the uh, the follow flap stuff at work. You know, we did the load. And see if the, it's all over the place. It's all over the place. It goes yeah. like this, right? Sometimes it pushes it in, and sometimes it pulls it back. Um, and so it felt like you know, there's like a combination of like wind up and friction and air force and so like you know you would yeah. kind of like put it to a spot and then look away and it'd be still moving and what got me was that there wasn't enough of this right that i was having roll problems which is great now i guess the other side is if if we don't have an airspeed indication problem and they're not generating any lift that would explain why they could do this but you will you will always have a downwash even a split flap a stupid split flap has downwash 
right? And so the pitch will, trim changed, so something's happening. Yes, yes, there you will have a downwash. So, uh, elevator, you got buffeting on the elevator? Yeah, it's buffeting, and like then the force just goes away. And like I can take it all the way to the stop, and all it does is increase the chances that the it's going to drop a wing. Airspeed doesn't go down. Okay, so we're but like, you know, it's like here, right? So like I can go like from here to here. No way. It's like so much. Like we'll look at the tapes, but it's like so much. Well, that's a good point. We, without a wing tip, I don't have, all we have is cockpit stuff. But you know, that tells me that we're stalling the elevator. A, a row of vortex generators is what's coming up next. And then the next step is if we didn't have those tufts right before the hinge line, what would that have been like? Because they're going to act like little vortex generators. Yeah, not enough though. Not enough. The boundary layer is going to be about that thick. Oh, really? Yeah. But you know, looking at all these videos, you really need to share all of that stuff because <laughs> I am so curious. Yeah, well, but I'm so glad that we got to was it 35? Pull it out to 35 here. Up, oh, right there, right? Yeah. Here, you should have a lot of slot effect right there, and you should have a little bit here. So these might be stalled, but it looks like all the tufts have been working. They're all unwound. Yeah. No, this is going to be cool. We, we will we will find a good solution with this. I am certain. You know, it's just a matter of. Uh, I mean, that, that's a lot of shit hanging out in the breeze that we just got away with. <laughs> and not only that, you're also increasing the wing area. You should, from what I can see here, you should have seen a 10 degree or 8 to 10 knot difference. This is like a normal flap for, 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 a, for a, you know, a regular flap. And they stall right here. It doesn't matter what they do, they stall right there. So I was eyes forward. I didn't look at tufts during yeah. the... No, I understand. And min airspeed. Yeah. And we have... Um, I was thinking about with this elevator all the way up if that camera is going to catch the tufts that are on the elevator Because you like you can look at it now and see what it can see but I just hope we you know if there's information we didn't lose it well, So uh, elevator trim all the way back, right? Yeah, yeah. And it was not enough. It was not enough. No but In this class forces airplane, are still low What's up? Stick forces are still low. Super low. Yeah, super low. And so the min speed uh, correlated to like no more force to pull the stick back and like so so when I reached min speed that was when the stick uh, like there was no force back here like I could bump like force that way but not this way right and then I would go like I was a change in force this way but not this way and then you could keep pulling it was just buff it buff it buff it buff it and no force like it felt like if I just went like it would just go that which sounds like stall. stalling the, the horizontal. sounds like stalling. Well, thank you for watching Flight 6. We're on our way out of the museum. Now, if you ever find yourself in Detroit, make sure you swing by the Henry Ford. It's pretty awesome. Uh, if you're not even into the machines, the architecture is pretty awesome, too. Thanks again. Where's the truck? Is that a good truck? <laughs>